and welcome to today's video where we'll be looking at the top five ways you can improve your gecko's enclosure to boost enrichment. Now I'm in no way saying my tanks are perfect, far from it, I am always seeking to improve them, but these are just the things I have found that work really well with my geckos. I'll also be joined by Tom from Ecologic Gecko where he will not only be sharing some photos and clips of his leopard gecko enclosure but he will be giving us some great advice particularly on substrate. So let's kick things off with the first way you can improve your setup and that is by adding a background. Now adding a background isn't a necessity but personally I think it makes a tank look better and I'd highly recommend covering at least three sides if you're using just a plain glass tank. Uh, whether that's with a laminated background, a 3D background or just some cardboard on the outside. This will give your gecko some extra privacy. I find that geckos who are exposed 360 degrees in a glass tank tend to spook easily and refrain from leaving their hides. So this can differ from gecko to gecko but if you're noticing your gecko is not really coming out of very much that might be why. Now if you want a nice background but you're on a bit of a budget you can opt for a laminated background. This is what I used years ago when I upgraded my gecko's vivariums. Now you can usually find these backgrounds online or in aquatic shops and this will give your gecko a little extra privacy and just finish off the overall look. However, if you wanted to take things a step further and offer your gecko more room to explore, then you may want to get a 3D background. You can choose to buy pre-made ones like the ones I use in my gecko's tanks, which I'll link below, or you can make them yourself. Here are a few ideas on how to do that. So number one, you can silicon sealant thin pieces of slate to the background to achieve a rocky look. Number two, you can build up the background using expanding foam, cork and slate and even silicon sealant on eco earth or topsoil afterwards. This is how I usually make my arboreal tanks so it kind of usually gives a more forest like look. Number three you can combine styrofoam, silicon sealant and grout like Emiology did in her leopard gecko's tank orbit. Um, I will link that video below if you want to check it out. Or number four you can buy a pre-made cork background and cut it to size. So the second way you can improve your enclosure to boost enrichment is to add substrate. Now of course loose substrate is a hotly debated topic in the reptile hobby but I believe if you do it right it can be incredibly beneficial to your gecko. Loose substrate not only provides physical enrichment but also mental enrichment as your gecko gets to rearrange their entire tank and truly feel comfortable in there. Now if you didn't feel confident adding loose substrate to your entire tank, you can always create a digging area such as a dig box for your geckos to just exercise those little legs in. You want to look for substrates that only contain natural or safe ingredients. Personally I use earth mix arid with all of my leopard geckos and it works great. Others will mix organic topsoil and play sand, but let's pop over to Tom and see what he would suggest. Hi guys, it's Tom here from Ecologic Gecko. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to work with Rebecca on this video to share some tips with you all on what's worked in Mr. Jinx's enclosure to date with regards to enrichment. As keepers we want to try and replicate their natural environment as much as possible. A good balanced mix that I have used is a DIY mix of organic topsoil horticultural grit sand, vermiculite and sphagnum moss. Clay-based soils such as excavator clay are best used um, on the warmer side uh, where the climate here is generally warmer so this is the arid zone and they're great for creating hills and burrows. I also use Arcadia's earth mix arid as a base layer above the drainage layer, which is hydroclay balls, which gives the whole soil mix that initial boost. 
So the third way you can improve your gecko's tank right now is by using effective heating and lighting. So using the correct UV system with your leopard gecko can make a massive difference to the way they interact with their surroundings and even how they see them. I'll keep this quite brief as I have explained UVB and UVA in the past, but UVA can almost unlock color vision in reptiles. So we can't see UVA, but they can. UVA can also help the immune system function, encourage natural behaviors, regulate reproductive cycles, and overall is extremely beneficial. And of course, UVB allows reptiles to produce vital vitamin D. I personally use the Shade Dweller 7% UVB Pro T5 lamps with all of my geckos. Heating wise, of course you can use a heat mat or ceramic heat emitter, but I know that I saw a massive difference when I switched my geckos to the deep heat projector as they were no longer bound to that one hot hide where they'd spend most of the time just trying to heat up properly. With the deep heat projector, you can combine it with a halogen lamp. Most people actually consider that a fantastic combination for reptiles and it's even something I might consider doing in the future. Overall though, I found that once I made that switch from an unlit tank with a heat mat to a bright tank with a projector, the geckos used their entire tank. So sure, you might not see them all the time in the day. They're often sleeping, hiding away, maybe partial basking. But by nightfall, they have so much more energy that they use their entire tank. They are always on the move, always exploring. And just because you don't see your gecko actively using that UV lamp like, say, a bearded dragonwood, it doesn't mean they're not benefiting from it, and this is a topic I'd like to tackle in the near future. The fourth way you can improve your tank is by adding natural materials such as slate. So oftentimes I see people switch to the deep heat projector or to a halogen, but they're still using a resin hide under it, whereas slate is a fantastic natural material that not only makes your tank look far more natural but um it truly gets heated up underneath the heater far better than i feel resin would also what's really cool about this is you can put slate on the cool side as well i know in summer when it got very hot here in england diego in the evening would go out and lay on his big slab of slate on his cool end and it was noticeably cooler like it was nice to touch it was nice and cool I also find that with using slate, especially when making a hide, you end up with these small crevices between the pieces, which geckos usually will utilize, especially under the heater. They will kind of sandwich themselves between the lovely warmed up slate. And if you are worried, if you're making a hide out of slate and you're worried about it toppling over because it can be a bit tricky to build, then you could always add a bit of silicon sealant between the pieces to stop that from happening. Also avoid stacking particularly heavy pieces near the top um, and avoid any sharp pieces of slate if you do find any sharp edges just knock them against a patio slab or get a little hammer or file and those sharp edges should just drop off now if you are thinking where on earth do i buy slate i would recommend checking out garden centers i have found these to be far cheaper than any reptile or aquatic stalls which usually often sell them by its weight or by its size, which can get very costly. Um, I've always got in a like two for 14 pound or two for 16 pound, like pound in currency, not weight, of course, uh, deal at my local garden center where I can buy two of the biggest pieces I can find for only like 14 pound or 16 pound. I then take it home, break it up, and now I have tons of pieces. Now granted, this isn't the easiest job to do. It's very messy, yet lots of random bits of slate. Uh, so if you think you have better luck just getting two small pieces that seem a good size for your tank, I think you'll still probably save money than buying it from a reptile shop. But yes, slate is definitely my favorite thing to use under the projector. And finally, the fifth way you can improve your gecko's tank this year is by adding clutter. Natural clutter, to be precise. Um, I think that's probably the best way forward. So using cork and driftwood to add climbing and hiding places for your geckos. I opted for a large cork branch in some of my geckos tanks and I actually find they're wide enough for my geckos to easily climb up them if they wish. Um, they'll even like run up them after food. It's really great to see. When it comes to driftwood, this can be a great anchoring thing that you can help build hides out of or make smaller hides from. 
I've also used other items such as palm torches in two of my geckos tank and I actually find they either like climb on them, lay on them, Gizmo will even lay next to it and she blends in really well. Other natural decorations you can use include seed pods, a leaf litter, vines, these can all help make the enclosure far more natural and increase enrichment. All these different textures, smells and shapes will make the enclosure far more interesting for your gecko. I think far more interesting for you to look at as well. And you may find your geckos have an easier time shedding because now they have so many more different textures to rub against when removing skin, which they would probably have in the wild. Tom also provided a cork hollow for his gecko, Mr. Jinx, and found that Mr. Jinx is currently hiding in it um, lately as he partially brew mates. Now, baby geckos in particular seem to really love climbing, um, but I would say try to limit just how high they can climb so they don't fall very far, um, and also try to get wider branches or cork areas. Now if you'd like to take your enclosure a step further and grow live plants in it, I would recommend checking out Tom's channel, which I'll link below. So far I've only been able to successfully grow an aloe vera in a pot in Diego's tank, um, but as you can see Tom's tank is just bursting with life so I'd highly recommend checking out his channel for that but I hope this video has helped and if you haven't already please subscribe for more gecko and bug content but thank you for watching guys and goodbye